What's up guys, party the dirty background. I was texting with a good friend of mine last night. They said, what did you do today? How was your day? Was it a good day? I said, it's all right. I went to the Acropolis, saw the Parthenon, walked around a little bit, just okay. And then I realized how strange that sentence is to say it's just okay that you saw the Acropolis and the Parthenon. It turns out travel fatigue is very real. I know what you're thinking, travel fatigue? Is this gonna be a video where he complains about traveling? No, it's not. It's scientifically proven. There's a lot of reasons why travel is taxing on the body. First off, a lot of travel involves sitting. The human body is not really meant to sit, especially when we're talking non-ergonomic seats like those found in airplanes, cars, buses, you name it, non-ergonomically designed seats makes your body fatigued. Next, there's jet lag, which is the difference in time zones when you're traveling. I don't even pay attention anymore. I don't know what time it is. So jet lag, different times, different sleep schedules, which brings me to my next point, schedules. We all have schedules in our daily lives. Monday through Friday, you wake up at 7 a.m., go to the gym for an hour. Then you go to work for eight hours. You have lunch at the same time, you have dinner around the same time, and very rarely do you have disrupts in your schedules. Well, when you're traveling, there's just no schedule at all. Sometimes I wake up at five in the morning and I'm running around all day. Sometimes I can't get out of bed until 10. A lack of a consistent schedule also adds to fatigue. Other factors are light, noise, and movement. Humans are not meant for noisy environments. The whole time that you're on a plane with that white noise and people all around you, crying babies, it's stressing out your body and making you way more fatigued than if you were in a quiet, comfortable area. Also, traveling is stressful. I have an 11 hour flight coming up and I'm panicked. I still have 24 hours, but those are not a restful 24 hours until that flight. Luckily, there are ways to overcome travel fatigue. And while they may seem obvious, it is important to observe them. Things like stop moving. I've done that. When I first started out, I was doing three to four days in each city and trying to move as much as possible. And that was killing me. So I started spending weeks in cities, but even then I was moving and splitting those up into two different hotel stays. So it was constantly moving and packing and all that stuff that's stressing out my body. So find a place, settle down. Other things are to slow down and just stay inside. Take a day for yourself. After a busy work week, maybe on a Sunday, you wouldn't leave the couch. But for some reason, if we're traveling for a long time, we forget to take those rest days. Spend a day in the hotel room. Go to the spa, go get a massage, lay in the bathtub, lay around and just do a normal, regular day like you would at home. You'll find yourself rejuvenated and ready to tackle the next few days. That's why I'm making some changes. Tomorrow is gonna be 16 hours of flight and four hours of waiting around in an airport. Very stressful day. But then I'm going to be in Thailand for eight whole days. One hotel, on the beach, totally relaxing, and not unpacking and packing and repacking and doing all of that stuff. So I'm going to reduce my stress levels a little bit. I'm going to prioritize meditation over the next few days, and then I will be going on a, a quick 12-day trip through China with Mark. That will be a lot of movement again. Gearing myself up with a little bit of relaxed time, and then going to move into go, go, go mode again, but then, on or around the 12th of December, I'm planning to fly from Shanghai back to Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm going to spend all of the holidays there with my family and friends. Anybody from Phoenix that's watching, let's film some stuff. And then after the New Year's, I am flying back to Shanghai, possibly doing Austria with a friend if that gets confirmed, do some snowboarding, and then back out doing this whole thing over again. This is an ending. This is gonna go on forever. But I hope you guys found some useful information in this video. Travel fatigue is a very real thing. For digital nomads or backpackers or anything like that, you guys have experienced it. It's good to put a face to a name and finally be able to identify it and know how to overcome it. So if you guys have any stories of your own of travel fatigue sneaking up on you or how you overcame it or something I missed, just comment down below. Give it a like on Facebook or YouTube and please make sure to follow Unguided Nations on Instagram and Facebook and go over to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Just search for Unguided Nations or go to bit.ly slash unguided. Hit the subscribe button, leave notifications on daily travel videos coming at you even when I'm suffering from travel fatigue. I'm Richie Holy with Unguided Nations. I will see you tomorrow on another adventure.